the blood. What's that? You mentioned the blood types. That's right. Colette type A, Jeffrey type B, Kimberly type AB, Kristen type O. Don't you think that's too confusing to a jury? On the contrary. It means that we can trace McDonald's movements throughout the apartment. It means that we know Colette left the master bedroom. Do it. What? Take your A's and your B's and let me know what happened. I want to know exactly what happened. Oh, no, that can't be done, Freddy. Not exactly. But uh, given our chemical analysis, I can come about as close as anyone can get. Good. Tell me. Look, are you sure you really want me to? Tell me. Here. Started here in the master bedroom after Kristen had wet the bed and gone back to her own room. The hairbrush that was found by the side of the bed, it's quite possible that the very first moment of violence came from your daughter hitting McDonald with that hairbrush. We know that he had a slight abrasion above the left eye when he was admitted to the hospital. At this point, Colette was bleeding from the nose and the mouth, and the blood was spreading out all over Jeffrey's pajama top. The pajama top was ripped open and the pocket was torn off. And it was here we found the largest number of pajama threads and fibers. She found a knife nearby and used it to protect herself, making cuts in the pajama top, dull tearing cuts that would be made by a knife of this type. Kimberly heard the struggle going on and came into the room. A neighbor was awakened by her dog barking, said she heard a woman screaming and a child crying. He uh, had the club now, and as he swung it, he may have accidentally hit Kimberly on the left side of the head. It was a blow of tremendous force. We know that because of the large amount of AB blood found in this location. Colette was struck at this same time. While she lay unconscious on the floor, he picked up Kimberly and carried her back to her room, which accounts for Kimberly's blood being on his pajama top. He was still wearing the torn and blood-stained pajama top and 19 threads of it were found in the child's bed covers. Somehow, he got the idea about the hippies, most likely from Esquire magazine. In order to give the impression that multiple assailants were involved, multiple weapons were necessary. He put on a pair of surgical gloves and armed himself with the old hickory knife. And then in Kristen's room, the child was stabbed in her back and also in the chest. Several threads from his pajama top were found in her bed. And then Kimberly was clubbed again and stabbed. consciousness and in a state of shock went into Kristen's room. It was there that Jeff found her again and beat her furiously with the club. Her A-type blood was found on the top sheet of the bed there and spattered on the wall. In 
the master bedroom, he collected the bedspread and sheet. On the way out of the room, carrying her, he left two footprints on the bare floor in Colette's blood, prints that match his left foot. While moving Colette, his pajama top became soaked with her blood. He left bloody fabric impressions in her blood type from his pajama top on the sheet. He also left a fragment of torn surgical glove. Then he went out and found the club again and the knife. And then? God knows what kind of maniacal rage seized him then. But he came back to Colette and struck her a vicious blow with the club, leaving a scrape mark on the ceiling as he swung it over his head. Then he stabbed her repeatedly with a hickory knife. Several threads from the pajama top were found under the word pig. Then he threw the top onto her to explain why it was so bloody. He stabbed Kristen many times with the ice pick, presumably before he went back to Colette in the master bedroom. And then, and this is very important, when he used the ice pick on Colette, the pajama top was over. The ice pick went through the pajama top over and over, leaving smooth cylindrical holes. He ripped off the gloves and four fragments of them fell about the room. Fragments that were identical to the gloves, the surgical gloves, found in the kitchen cabinet. He now had to set up the living room to make it appear that there had been a struggle. As a surgeon, he knew just where to place the self-inflicted wound. It would prove that he was attacked. It was nothing, of course, compared to what his family had suffered. Many drops of McDonald's blood were found in the sink. He um, wiped the weapons clean and put them outside in the backyard. The bath mat had the bloody impressions of a wiped ice pick and knife. At 3.40 a.m., he picked up one of the two phones and called for help. That's about it. Freddy. Thank <laughs> you.